What's a man do when he's in Austin? He's hungry and looking for a little barbecue. People debate the best barbecue from Kansas City to Carolina, but when you're in Austin, he comes to the best barbecue in town. That's right, Franklin Barbecue. They have the best barbecue, but you got to get here early. Kevin! Clint, welcome to Franklin Barbecue. Let's eat, baby. I'm waiting for you. Is this the line? Yeah, back there. Back in the line. Well, yes! You wouldn't mind if I kind of slid in front of you here in the line, or? Look at that. Do they have tofu here? Do you? Uh, oh. I just saw Blair skip the line right to the front. Wait, Blair? Yeah, yeah. In there? yeah. OK. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Woo! So good. Sold out. Oh no! Oh my gosh, Kevin. That was so good, buddy. Thank you. Myers, I'm waiting. telling you, this place is so good. You're going to love it. I will. Sorry, Chris. First come, first serve. Oh. <laughs> and, and Jensen, who, who Shannon mentioned a moment ago, so great to have you guys a, a part of this. And for you, you're familiar with this place, but your first cup race, why would you want to get involved in this? Uh, well, first of all, yes, I have raced her a few times in F1, but um, it's a little different in a cup car. I think it's 40 seconds slower in a cup car, but you're a lot busier in a cup car, I tell you that. But um, I love trying new things, and, you know, I don't class myself as just an F1 driver. I'm a racing driver. I want to go and try new things. This is such a challenge for me and a massive opportunity. So a massive thank you to, to Mobile One for, for making this happen. I'm going to be doing three races. This is the first of the three, uh, and it's just... It's just great being out with the best in the world when it comes to stock car racing. Yeah, These guys are super talented when it comes to road courses. People don't realize. Yeah, and go there. I was going to say, what do you see the biggest difference when people are watching this race between drivers coming over from F1 that are the best at that, that have been world champs, to the, to the champs of NASCAR? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's completely different how they need to drive, and it's better for him to explain, but if you see these cars going all over the road, and uh, but I think the car control is very important, and, uh, uh, you know, normally Jensen is where I am now, asking me questions, you know, how he, how he will be doing, so my first question to Jensen will be, how do you think he will be doing, not only today, in the, in the next three races? I mean, driving a car is one thing. Driving a car with 38 other crazies out there, it's going to be <laughs> crazy. It's going to be crazy. Well, I'm one, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be it's going to be mad. Jimmy, it's been almost two and a half years since you've run a road course in a stock car. What are your expectations <laughs> today? I'm glad I have 68 laps today to get it figured out. It's quite different and uh, much different than what I remember when I was in one of these last. But having a blast. Just so thankful to be out here. Um, you know, thankful to be part of such a great race team with Legacy Motor Club. Club Wyndham on board. Uh, we got two cars in the top ten in qualifying. I'm coming from the back of the field. It's going to be a fun day fun day and you've also got as you mentioned the two cars in the top 10 you're wearing two hats today one of them is an owner how rewarding is it to see your two cars up front right now uh, it's great. I mean, those guys did a phenomenal job, and, and we're trying to use the third car to drive some new technology and new ideas, and um, they, they didn't work out so much like we wanted to yesterday, but certainly the 43 and the 42 are in a great spot. We've been able to migrate back to that setup, and uh, look, look forward to having some of those guys today. Well, if you want to pick a man who uh, could have the upset win today, it's Jordan Taylor. And Jordan, you've accomplished a lot in your career, especially when it comes to road course racing, but what has it been like jumping into a cup car in NASCAR? Yeah, it's a uh, different worlds. I mean, there's almost no correlation coming from what, what I'm used to. So first couple laps in the, in the car were eye-opening, to be honest. Uh, there's no correlation from my sports car, even the Garage 56 program that I'm, that I'm working with. I thought it would have some correlation from a driving point of view, but the cars are just so different. So, yeah, it's been a big learning curve, but the guys at Hendrick Motorsports have really prepped me well, being in the simulator last week, leading into the race. Uh, and, yeah, just talking to different drivers. Andy Lally reached out, sending me his driver notes from here last year. Chase has been a, a, a huge help, just texting me before and after every session about what he can help with. So, yeah, it's gone well so far, but I think today is the true test of putting all the little details, you know, to work. Well, you have an alter ego. For the fans that don't know, you need to check out Rodney Sandstorm. Basically, he's Jeff Gordon's number one fan. Now, in reality, you get to drive for Jeff Gordon, Mr. H. What is that like? It's surreal. I mean, Jeff was the guy who called, uh, let me know the opportunity was there if I wanted it. So... I jumped at it, obviously, it's, it's impossible to say no, and as soon as you say yes, it's like, holy cow, now I have to actually do this with the top team and the top car, and yeah, if you're, if you're not performing in a car like this with Hendrick Motorsports, you know this, the one variable is the driver, so I'm glad it's going well so far, but yeah, like I said, 
I'm um, just trying to make everyone proud with their decision to put me in the car and, and do a good job for everyone. Hey everybody, famous stand-up comedian Tom Segura here. Now let's be real, NASCAR and comedy have more in common than you might think. For both, you start at the bottom. Ladies and gentlemen, this small dives and late night sets. Please welcome to the stage. The half-filled racetracks with only family and friends, where the smell of cheap beer and bad decisions linger in the air. But you have the talent and desire, dives will become sold out venues. The short stands become the grandstands, heckles and boos become standing ovations and cheers. NASCAR is truly a great American pastime, which is exactly why we're making a huge deal of two foreigners on the job today. These guys are almost as foreign as right turns are to NASCAR drivers. No, 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 no. They're going right today. Well, that's my time. Don't forget to listen to my podcast and check out my specials. And Chris Myers, I'll do the jokes. Enjoy the race. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Tom Segura. They love Finally, it. we find somebody that can do this a good job. Uh -oh. Austin! Let's get weird! Coda! Let's go! Drivers, start your engine! Under green. Let it pretty slow, Kurt. That was a slow start. We'll see. We're going to see four or five wide log jam city. Here we go. That looked quite orderly. It was very simple. All things considered. Four wide. That was just a first start. <laughs> Long race to go. Now, no guarantees we will have restarts today. This race could go green all the way to the checker. Not likely, but possible. That's a good point, Mike. I mean, that's that's weighing heavily on all these teams, engineers, drivers, everybody. So tight right through there, trying to get things sorted out. And here you comes Cindric. Get that spot up. Cindric on the outside, trying to take second from Reddick. Remember when he dominated in the rain here two years ago? For There's that the jump, jump you were talking about. Yeah, Reddick didn't quite get the best turn one, and he's still trying to reel back, and he might have to settle into third. He's going to throw it in there. We'll, well see. Cindric ran him wide, and I don't think he liked it. He dove back down on the inside, took that position away. And there they go. They're all the way down that long back straightaway. Going to be grabbing fifth gear, 175 miles per hour down into turn 12. My money's on uh, the 45 here at Outbreakham. Off of a 40-mile-an-hour corner, mind you. Full send right here. Send it in there. Well, and look at Suarez. Look what it does for him. Those two need to sort that out pretty quick or else he's going to get a two for one. Seen that many times on that corner. I think that was generous of Cendric to kind of yield and get settled in here. Smart. This is that tight stadium section. Man, oh. Suarez dove it in yeah, there. He took that there. spot. Door slammed Cendric. <laughs> Almost spun out Reddick in doing so. And that happens sometimes where that, that car that's not even expecting anything because the two behind them are racing so hard, you end up getting clobbered from two cars back. Cool corner, though. It, it opens that you have to get that wide entrance, but it opens the door up for somebody to take it. And that's exactly what Suarez did. Cindric coming right back on the inside. That's the preferred line right there at turn 20. Man, that's some great racing. Positioning chance. back, going back again, back and then having some crossovers. Over it in. Uh oh, uh -oh Keselowski. Caution. Well, here it is. Didn't know if it was going to happen. Sure enough. And Jimmy Johnson in the pit lane. Right rear down on him. Oh. Multiple contact between turn 19 and 20. Puts us under caution after lap one. Again, yep. Johnson's on the inside. He's kind of minding his own business. He's, he goes way left. 17 moves Third. over to avoid the car spinning, gets into Ty Dillon in 77, into Jimmy Johnson in 84. Their days are definitely done. Yeah, that was a hard hit for the 84. It's a six, Brad Keselowski spinning. And I'm sure the six didn't just spin by himself. I'm That's sure right. he was assisted in some All way. right, Keselowski was able to continue. Two minutes to get 
get it fired up, bottomed out real bad and spun out. Just bottomed out super hard and turned 19 and spun out. Oh, wow. Well, he got assist, but it yep. was off of the, that was them lowering blocks I was talking about, limiter, ride limiters. All right, they're settling out, but back here, three wide. Jordan Taylor, Whoa, big time dive right on Locked that left front He's up, got here. into the You're back of Aaron Jones. Can't tell if he spun spin. him out or not. I think they're fine. Oh, oof. That's how easy it's done. That's that's the experience that he doesn't have in these cars. I were Chase Elliott recuperating in uh, in Colorado. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Glad we could make this work. I know you'd sure rather be out there uh, than than sitting where you are. But we got off to a great start in turn one, and then what happened? And how are you doing? Most importantly, yeah, I'm doing really good. I uh, appreciate you guys having me and. Thanks to Fox for, for setting this up and, and making this go. So um, I'm looking forward to, yeah, just watching the race with you guys. I don't know. We're just kind of getting started. I was hoping we could get more than a lap or so going to understand a little bit of what's going on. I saw Jordan kind of had a tough opening lap. But, yeah, I hate Jimmy got taken out there. But uh, a lot of racing left and excited to see kind of where it goes and, and some of the things that um, – some of the things I can see from this vantage point is super different than what I'm used to seeing. Obviously, I must be in there, too, but um, we're working through it, so we'll make the most of it. Well, Jimmy Johnson checked in, released from the Infield Care Center. Jimmy, I know you were so excited about today. How disappointing is this one? Yeah, it's really disappointing, but, you know, it comes with racing. It's part of it. Unfortunately, we didn't have a good day yesterday in qualifying, and we're back there around around the wreck, and we know that those those things can happen. So uh, just most disappointed for Club Wyndham. I'm very thankful they came on board for this race, and sadly we didn't take, you know, one, one lap under green. Seven-time champ out of the race early here. Oh! Bubba hard in the back of Kyle Larson turns him around really hard. Larson trying to refire as Wallace Major. pulls away. We are still under green. Major damage on the front of turn 12 is where this happened. That breaking zone at the end of the long straightaway. And Larson will drive away. Wow. Uh, Whoa. It's almost like his brakes went Something out. Went wrong. Yeah. Holy smokes. Sailed it in there. That may be the, that's obviously probably the end of that 23 cars day with Bubba Wallace, but eh. I thought he hit him in the left rear wheel, Kurt. I don't. I think that's going to be okay. Let's uh, ride with the money lion on board camera in Bubba's car. That thing just never slowed down. I mean, he jumped out to pass the car under braking, and then it just was it was gone after that. I've never really seen that. You heard the tires complaining when the brakes locked up, but the car did not slow there. See the fluid on the back of that car too in the camera. And Cody Ware with a spin. Overcorrected. Kyle Larson in trouble again. And this is where guys would want to pit because the yellow is most likely going to come out. Maybe a few guys did sneak on to pit road. And caution is out. I wonder if Larson was trying to get to pit road. And Fire back up here. And he got in the oil of the car that wiped him out. That's exactly what happened. So Larson gets going again. And we have the second caution flag of the day. Oh, oh Kyle Larson boy, turned by Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin. He is Bub out of the race, unfortunately. Frustrated. Yeah, too much damage on that car to continue. Here's Jamie. Bubba Wallace has been checked and released. We saw the contact you had with the 11 and the 5 there, Bubba. But what happened to the car that puts you out of the race? Um, broke toe link in the rear and then oil on. Just uh, trying my hardest not to go down that slippery slope of self-doubt right here. Two weeks in a row making rookie mistakes. Six years in a cup. Need to be replaced. Thanks, Bubba. Ah, he's always so hard on himself. I mean, he, he wants the best and he, he wants to continue to improve on the road courses and the short tracks where he knows he's good and then the mile and a half are his his cup of tea. But man, you're all right, man. There's, there's mistakes that happen. Just don't make the same one twice. Oh, Christopher Bell. All this talk about strategy. Now you see the blue flag waving. That is an advisory flag. There is something ahead you need to be aware of. You don't have to slow down. You don't have to stay in line. It's just a, it's an advisory flag for the drivers. Trouble ahead. In that case, it was the 20 around. Bell missed the corner by maybe a tire width, which put his outside tires in a lot of the uh, the fuzz that's been kicked up. 
But here we go. Here's Reddick. Unbelievable pace that he has. Just think how fast or how far ahead he would have been if he had been on a on a uh, two strategy call there, two stop strategy. Let's see. To the inside for the lead. How much you can do to defend that? Just dive spot. Clear. Clear. You are the leader. He had this speed in practice. The question was, you know, that upfront speed that he showed in practice, was it going to live? And I would have told you, Gunther, there's no chance he could have kept that pace up. Boy, he proved me wrong in this race. I think he proved us all wrong, you know. I mean, it's so amazing the, the pace he has got. I mean, you know, with the pit stops, I mean, he's just like got it all back. Can you imagine with the two stop strategy for the race where he would be now? He would be going to lap. Corner. This is uh, turn eight where everybody kicks up the dust. And if you're offline a little bit, you're out there in the fuzz. Fuzz got him. I mean, the popo are in the in the chicane and the S's, right? Yeah. That, that fuzz is just dirt. You know, their <laughs> ability to get down below those uh, rumble strips and just keep dipping farther and farther into that dirt. Uh, so many times, you know, Sonoma, when you everybody getting into one and up the hill there, dipping their left side. Oh, Caution. my gosh. <laughs> Turn nine, debris has brought out the third caution of the day. There's the dirt. Well, that's where, yeah, Denny Hamlin came back on track in turn nine. But, yeah, that's. I don't like it. Run my strategy conversation up. These guys are needing a breather. But, dang it, they caused it. <laughs> they were in the dirt. And what happens is just so many green flag laps, so many cars going through the dirt in turn eight, the, the whole place was turning into soup over there. Look at that. I mean, if that, you miss your line and don't get down, yeah. you said it, Kurt. You nailed it, too. And Denny, he was just a little bit high above those rumble strips, got those left side. Well, you go right ahead, but here's the result. Look how much dirt is. Oh, don't look at him. Look at that <laughs> dirt that was kicked up in that. And here they come. Logano, Burton, Reddick, Cody Ware up there, William Byron, Suarez Chastain, and they're on it. Here we go. Oh, boy. Look at this. All the way down to pit lane on the inside. Lock him up. Oh, the 45 overshot turn one. Uh, Six okay. wide. Right. Great move. He was Bold just smart. Move. Smart staying out of it. Going wide. Interesting. Wow. That is such a cool thing. Five's going to try to stick it on the outside here because he'll have the inside for turn 13. Took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was going to say there. Not only do you have to outbreak him, strategizing who has a track position, oh, third line on the exit. He and let him go. An opportunity for Chastain to close there. Not sure he quite made the most of it, but Ooh, see those two cars are side by side. Yep, there's this, the though. one. He likes this. Reddick loves to be on the inside there. And now you're going to cross back under? Sure as heck did. Over. I love that section of the race track. <laughs> Look at this. Now what? they're back side by side, the opposite side, but the 45 will have the inside all the way through the carousel. Four different opportunities in a row to cross each other back over. Can you shake him? Order. He didn't shake him. I'm him here. He now Byron's that. got the advantage. That's good racing. And they are racing each other with a lot of respect right now. <laughs> Can the 45 cross back under? Going to try. The Toyota Owners 400 begins next Sunday, 3.30 Eastern. Pre-race coverage starts at 2. That's on FS1 on the Fox Sports app. And Larry Mack will be with us in the booth to help break down all of the strategy of short track racing at Richmond. It's a good point, Mike. You know, he's sitting here talking about strategy on a road course. That Richmond race, all about strategy. Be handy and nice to have Larry back in the booth with us. Help us explain that. <laughs> Suarez showing up to the party is really going to bring in a fiesta. Well, it's not just going to be Bowman. And, there he is. Uh, Byron's Suarez off. Is he out? out? Surely he Fair knows off, this He's slid up in that dirt, I think, Kurt. Yeah, he might have. He might have been off uh, line a little bit in turn eight. <laughs> Suarez gives the boot to Chastain, and here he goes. They open the door up for Byron to get back. No. This is interesting. Trackhouse is, was a winner here last year. They've got two cars, second and third right now. 
and the leader from 2311 is trying to nurse the fuel. Well, let's let's let the truck house <laughs> take the gloves off, boys. Byron slid oh. up in the leader Reddick's dirt. The leader really went through the dirt big time, threw it on Byron's tires and slid him up out of the groove. Been there. That's one of those unwritten rules, right? That's one of those little things that drivers do that people don't know about much. There's just that little bit of boost there. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. It's like I've been given the green light. Oh my. Oh, oh. Brad Kozlowski. That's oh, awesome. looking for a safe That's harbor, awesome. and I don't think he's going to get there. Nope. Oh, that changes everything. 12 laps to go. <laughs> Caution out. Lap be aggressive and be ready for contact. That's what you have to be as an open wheel guy. Be ready for contact with these stock cars. Here we go. Man, a great jump for Bell. Denny didn't get a good jump at all. Reddick already the hands inside. Great restart for Reddick. Look at him crazy. All over the place. Right and down the way outside Dillon. and one car around Austin Dillon. Well, more than one car around. That uh, is, is that Chastain? Chastain? Chastain as well. Well, that was ugly. Chastain's broke left rear. Almondinger was involved as well. We may have another caution here. Look at that. Reddick to Reddick the point. Was able to grab the lead from that third row. That's incredible. I mean, just for the breaking zones that he's been able to capitalize on. Caution. I was going to say, they're probably going to be cautioned with debris and cars not rolling. They'll have to remove Ross Chastain's car. Well, let's re rack him. Remember, he had a bad pit stop, but that's how he ended up back there. You'll see that light blue number one come into view here. Love this drone footage. You see the baby blue car in the far right, and there's going to be about five guys to his inside. Four into the, I think it's a 16 that got into the three. Then on the outside, Eric Jones gets into Chastain, spins him around. We'll watch from uh, Ryan Blaney's Ford on board camera. What do you do here, Gunther? Hope and pray? Yeah, that's the only thing you can do up in the middle of there. That's the only thing you can do. All right. Kurt, now you can say it. Cautions breed cautions. Okay, all right, all right. Yep. <laughs> Denny out there off the racetrack. And Almendinger with a flat right front. And Four. maybe more. Four got into the back of, I think that was who that was, into the back of him. That put him into the back of the 31, or the three, and turned him around. It's going to come down to a big slip up or something that, that costs time on the 24 or the 45. What they are doing, though, is driving away from the competition. Yeah, it does look like the eight car of Kyle Busch stabilized. He's now holding third with a, with a decent gap. Setting up for a passing zone. We even got loose. Oh, yeah. He's not going to hesitate on this one. No, sir. See, now it's a matter of do you keep your momentum, keep that minimum speed up through the apex, and he's able to close the door. If I'm William, I think I really consider second row inside because I think if you're on that front row, uh, if somebody is going to bulldoze uh, Tyler out of the way, which – Odds are pretty good. I think I think Tyler's in a really tough spot being the leader. Uh, if you're in the outside of that first row, you're going with him, and, and you're likely going to be in a lot of trouble too. So I think if you're William, you think about lining up third and putting yourself on offense and hoping for the best. Tyler's blown two of these restarts today going wide uh, out of one. So That's a really about. good like point. That. What's on the racetrack? Uh, there's pretty much a yard sale out there. Well, he's yeah. not the only one with trouble. I That's think that was, was it Priest behind him? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. So Priest ran hard up against somebody. But that front end damage likely Ooh. blew it on the racetrack, I would say. Yep. Yeah, that thing's ready for the chop yard. Not sure who he hit, but it was a ton. Going to need a lot of carbon fiber to fix that one. Kyle Larson gets the free pass. Let's go back to the restart. I mean, to me, this was a very civilized top three rows. And then if somebody tries to shoot the middle, a lot of door slamming back there. Blaney gets spun around. Oh, oh there's where Priest got turned and yep. hit 
And that was the start of the pileup back there. The issue is the funnel effect because the gravel sneaks up on you on the exit of this corner. Watch the gravel way out there, and the car's got to jump back on. Priest, the red car, way on the outside, and he's going to be in trouble right here. He had to do exactly what Kurt was talking about. Had to get back down to stay out of that gravel. Gets turned around. From Ryan Blaney. Oh, that's frustrating. Josh Balicki involved there. Well, Ryan Priest made repairs, got back on track, but... That little choo-choo is not going to make it to the top of the hill. Nope. McDowell oh, sends it on the outside. Dive. They're in a medic underneath it. of him. Around right. goes Truex. From Daniel Suarez. <laughs> and Ryan Blaney, or excuse me, Martin Truex. See, he's right on edge and doing staying just off the 24 and then gets clobbered. Nothing you can do. Mm -mm. Too bad. It's amazing. 2311 and how fast we're growing and how how much we're doing together. It's forward together on this program and it brings brings me a little bit to be choked up. I was hoping to be back in that car, but it's in good hands. And it's a great team and I love racing with those guys. What a job Reddick has done today, right, Mike? I mean, have you seen that on a road course in a while? He's led 40 of the 74 laps. He and William Byron put on quite a show and dominated. But Reddick in the breaking zones had the measure of Byron and everybody else today. He was so fast, he pitted an extra time and still won this race. Still put himself in position. The speed in this car, the job they did, Billy Scott and company, and that kid behind the wheel, pretty impressive. That is a big nugget to remember, is that they were off sequence, and Billy Scott's like, we have speed, I'm putting you back in with the group, let's take our, our lumps now. And now they're there. here they are. And through holding these guys off of so many attempts at these restarts, so close, and then the caution comes out, heck, you can't help but to, to root for him. Through 19. Tyler Reddick, a two-time winner on the road courses of the Cup Series last year. Finished top 10 in both Coda races. Pressure here, we back to the line. Three of his four wins come on the road course. Tyler Reddick, Masters Circuit of the Americas. That's my boy. That's my boy. Hey, that is a monster win, buddy. Thank you. That <laughs> Billy Scott, yeah, the nerves in him. What a what an experience. What a last 20 minutes that that man went through. Kyle Busch 1.4 seconds back. Alex Bowman 2.3. Chess. That's a family photo. Yep. Yeah. That's my boy. <laughs> hands, him, hands the young fellow over the wall. And over the car. How about that? Let's go, boy. Yeah, buddy. I got so much faith in you. Hell of a job. Way to go. That was the best one of all. He might be able to do a couple more restarts, Mike. I'm not sure that he wants to, though. Tyler, you had to overcome three restarts at the end of that race, multiple restarts, different pit strategies throughout the course of the day. When it was all said and done, though, this car was just flat out fast. What does this one mean? It means the world. Um, yeah, this, this whole 2311 team's been working so hard all winter long to, to make the road course program better. I was extremely motivated to come in here and Sorry, I gotta take this thing out. Uh, and improve that performance too. So 
just so proud of this Monster Energy Toyota Camry TRD. I mean, this whole team, Toyota, everybody, all the resources, everything they've been putting into this to help turn around the road course program means a lot. I'm Brad. I'm out of, I'm out of gas, but uh, I feel a little bit better with Monster Energy. Tyler Reddick, your winner in Circuit of the Americas. And Kyle Busch brings it home second today. Restarts. What did you need, Kyle, just to hold off Tyler and, and you get one spot better? Yeah, I don't know if we could have, even if we were on equal tires. I mean, when we tested here, they were lights out and had us beat on the front side of the runs. We needed longer runs, but even today, for some reason, we just didn't have the really great long run speed. We had good middle run speed, but overall, um, you know, for as much as effort and everything that we've put into coming here and, and focusing on this place and all the testing and everything that we've been able to do over the offseason. We come out here with a really good finish. So, you know, um, Tyler's obviously a really good road racer. I mean, he proved it driving it's this car one. here last year and I was able to get in it and, and run right back to him. So I've been trying to emulate the things that he did and in order to make this car fast last year and just not quite all the way there. But um, they had a whale of a car and I want to thank NetSpin for, for being on our on our car here this weekend in Austin, hometown partner for us right here in, in Austin, Texas. And so uh, excited to get them a runner-up finish. Thanks, Cowbell.